Spotlight brought to you by Ford. This week we celebrate a man best known for his deer stalker calf. Former Warrior owner Franklin Muley is just as enthusiastic today as he was 30 years ago when he moved the franchise to Oakland. Before settling in the East Bay, the team logo might as well have been a road map. We played, in, we played home games in San Jose, yeah. in Sacramento. Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, <laughs> Nebraska. How about the six games we played in San Diego? San Diego, we played home um, games in Cincinnati. We, were, we didn't have a home. We, we, were a, we, were a home, we were the homeless warriors, really. The Warriors' new home would be the Oakland Coliseum. The new team name, though, has its own history. And somehow I figured the Golden State Warriors was a good name. It was, as a boy growing up here and being a native son, that was a term we used all the time, the Golden State. And, and the main thing was I wanted more people to feel that we, it was their team. I wanted the San Franciscans not to be totally upset with me for taking the name away. And I wanted people like San Jose and, and Peninsula and Millbrae. And, and I think that was a ubiquitous enough name that anybody in Northern California could feel it was their team. That team would need a star. And 1972 saw the return of super scorer Rick Barry. But the franchise chemistry began with head coach Al Adels and owner Muley, who maintained a personal relationship with everyone on the roster. He uh, likes to know all the players on a first-name basis. <clears throat> In fact, he prides himself on being able to do that. Uh, he prides himself on listening to the players' problems and being able to help his family. Uh, the basketball team is part of his family. He never, never interfered with what went on on the floor. He never interfered with what the coach did. And he never interfered with what the players did. And I think, you know, in most families, uh, that's not necessarily true. You have someone in the family saying you ought to do this or you ought to do that, but I think that um, it was a unique situation. Well, it, uh, it was the fact that I could deal with my own limitations. You know, I wasn't a very good athlete, and, um, and when I hired people like uh, you or Bob Fury or anything, I figured you knew more about basketball than I did and I should let you do your job. Run the one down, open and close. One down, open and close. 1974-75 saw an unprecedented and electrifying Warrior run through the postseason. The Warriors have come from 19 behind to even this series. One of the great comebacks in the 13 year annals of the Warriors in the AM. The title was won in a shocking four straight over Washington. And he's got it, the ball game is over! There's no question about it. We pull together all along, and as we said, from the training camp, we win together or we lose together, and I think that we won together. This has been such a fantasy year. I mean, the way we started out, it's supposed to be also ran, so we battle and scratch and fight our way to become the world champions. It's, it's a fitting climax, I think, for one of the most unique teams in pro basketball history. The celebration was also unique, an incredibly happy six-hour team-only flight home, a chance to relive the year and cement lifetime friendships. But we really bonded on the plane. And, and uh, it, like you say, we were flying home without a plane, really. But the scariest thing was when we got back to San Francisco. If you remember, we couldn't land in San Francisco. And it was late at night. And uh, they took us over to Oakland. And they had to divert because people were on the runway. And I remember they were telling us they're going to put us on buses to take us to San Francisco because if they don't take us over there, they're going to tear up that airport. So we had to now get on a bus at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and go to that. And we had another celebration over there, and the fans were great. Well, I tell you, I don't remember very much. I remember when we got off of the place, we got mobbed, though. Somebody <laughs> stole my hat. Yeah, right. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, you got in this... this in this ocean of fans right up right on the tarmac you know we come off the off the plane right on the tarmac and you just got engulfed and somebody was like, hey franklin where's your hat i thought oh, somebody's wife and so the uh, next day he wrote a story about poor franklin he uh wins the crown but loses his hat and i got festooned the story ever they made a wire service and i got festooned with hats <laughs> The friendly owner with the funny hat and the franchise's best team. A great chapter in Warrior history. The play.
players really, really, you know, wanted to win for you. But, you know, it had nothing to do with me. It had nothing to do, you know, even though I appreciate what they did, but they really, really wanted to win that, that championship for you in the Bay Area because, uh, you know, like I said, you go a long time without winning one. And you hear players today always say, I just want to ring, win that ring. And it, it was just a special time. It was a special time. It was a special time for both of us, Yep. Today. Yep. We're still here. <laughs> We're still here. Warriors.com, cast your votes, rookie plays of the year. Murphy all the way to the goal, the facial over Dale Davis being that irritant that we talked about. Play two, the aerial skills of Jason Richardson against Detroit. Reverse magic baseline, and he throws it down, just like he did at the slam dunk competition. Number three, Arenas. Is he a point? This ain't bad. Right to Jamison. For the two runs, I'm Brian. See you next time on Roundtable.